Now that we've seen an example of a divide-and-conquer algorithm, we're going to extract out some of the general principles underlying the divide-and-conquer technique. And we're also going to see how to analyze the running time of a divide-and-conquer algorithm. So the first step in a divide-and-conquer algorithm is the divide step. We express the problem in terms of the same problem or a slight variation of the original problem on smaller inputs. And this nicely sets us up for a solution with a recursive algorithm. The second part of a divide and conquer algorithm can have a lot more variety when you look at different examples. I'm going to call the second part the create, complete, combine step. So these are kind of capture the three kinds of work that go into the, the second step of a divide and conquer algorithm. So at a high level, the remaining tasks are to, well, first you have to create the subproblems, then you have to complete any cases not covered by the subproblems, and finally you have to combine the answers to the subproblems and anything else that you compute into an answer to the original problem. Okay, so let's go through each of these create, complete, combine in a bit more detail. So create. A natural task is we have to create the, the division into subproblems. And the buy and sell stock problem, this step was easy, right? Our subproblems were just defined by the first half of the vector and the second half of the vector. So all we had to do here was compute the midpoint. But later on, we're going to see an example of a divide and conquer sorting algorithm called quicksort, where the create step is actually the bulk of the work of the algorithm. The second kind of work in this category is to complete the cases. So there may be some case that is not handled by our division into subproblems. And this was the case of the buy and, buy and sell stock algorithm, right? So there was a missing case from our two subproblems, which was the case of buying the stock in the first half of the vector and selling it in the second half. Okay, so this was the main work that we had to do in the buy and sell stock algorithm, was to handle this third case. The third kind of work for this step is to combine the answers to the subproblems and anything else that we compute and the complete step into an answer in, in, of the original problem. Okay, so in the example we just saw of the buy and sell stock problem, so this step was also pretty easy. We just took the maximum of the three cases, right? We combined with the maximum, uh, the maximum of the answers to the two subproblems and the case where we bought in the first half of the, of the vector and sold in the second half of the vector. Um, later, we're going to see a divide-and-conquer sorting algorithm called merge sort, where the combined step is where the substantial work takes place. Okay, so in summary, the create, complete, combined step is kind of the spice of a divide-and-conquer algorithm. It's, it's harder to characterize this step because you can see a lot of variety here and which task requires the most work is going to vary from algorithm to algorithm. Okay, so now we're going to analyze how much time our divide and conquer algorithm for the buy and sell stock problem takes. As it is a recursive algorithm, the expression for the running time is going to appear both on the left and the right side of our equation for the running time. And this leads to what's called a recurrence relation. And this is generally true for a divide and conquer algorithm. When you try to analyze the running time, you're going to get a recurrence relation. And so in order to figure out the running time, you're gonna to have to solve this recurrence. So let T of N be the time it takes to solve the buy and sell stock problem on a vector of size N. And now let's go through our algorithm again and remember that there were three cases we recursively use the algorithm to solve the buy and sell stock problem on the first half of the vector. 
So this is going to take time t of the floor of n over 2. And likewise, we solve the buy and sell stock problem on the second half of the vector uh, recursively. So that's going to take time t of the ceiling of n over 2. And then in the third case, we computed the minimum value in the first half and the maximum value in the second half, which can be done in time order of n. Apart from these three cases, there's just a constant amount of extra work, right? So to create the subproblems for item one and two, we had to compute the midpoint, but that's just constant time. And to combine the answers from the three cases, we have to compute the maximum of three things, but again, that's just constant time. So we can say that the total time uh, to solve the buy and sell stock problem on an array of size n is equal to, uh, so t of n is equal to t of the floor of n over 2, that's the time to solve case 1, t of the ceiling of n over 2, the time to solve case 2, plus order n, the time to solve uh, case 3, and this you know extra constant work that we have to do. We can just throw that into the order n as well. So like any recursive algorithm, we also need to consider the base case. So our base case, you know, if you remember from the code we wrote, the base case was when the vector has size 1. And in that case, we just return 0. So the running time on a vector of size 1 is just constant. And this is a very common base case you're going to see uh, in divide and conquer algorithms, right? Once the input size is just constant, then we can... Uh, normally just solve the case directly in constant time. Okay, so this is our recurrence relation for our, our algorithm, our divide and conquer algorithm for the buy and sell stock problem. So in order to figure out the running time, we're going to have to solve this recurrence relation. So now I'm going to assume that the input size n is a power of 2. Okay, and in that case, we don't have to worry about this floor of n over 2 and ceiling of n over 2, which is you know, kind, of, kind of annoying. Okay, so this isn't going to affect the big O complexity of the solution, this assumption that, that n is a power of 2. Okay, so when n is a power of 2, our recurrence relation simplifies to t of n is equal to 2 times t of n over 2 plus order n, right? Okay, and then we still have the same base, base case. t of 1 is order 1. All right, so this is a very typical looking recurrence relation. So let's kind of go through the anatomy of this recurrence relation. So the, the 2, and on the, the first 2 on the right side of the equation, um, the 2 is the number of subproblems. So in our case, we have two subproblems, the first half and the second half. The argument to t on the right side, so t of n over 2, that n over 2 is the size of the subproblems, right? Each of our subproblems is of size n over 2. And the extra term, the order n term, is the time for the create, complete, combine step. So in our case, that's order n. Okay, so you, this is a very common uh, structure of a recurrence for a divide and conquer problem. Okay, so now let's see how to solve for the running time. And to do that, we're going to expand out this recurrence relation. And I'm going to kind of expand it out in a tree-like form. So we start with t of n. We know what t of n is. It's t of n over 2 plus t of n over 2, plus a constant times n. Okay, so I'm just explicitly writing out the order n term here with, with the constant. So, uh, you know, it's plus c times n for some constant c. Okay, and now we can just keep expanding, right, using the same formula. So what is t of n over 2? Well, t of n over 2 is t of n over 4 plus t of n over 4, plus a constant times n over 2, right? And we have the same constant there. And likewise, we can expand out the other 
uh, branch of our tree. So that t of n over 2 is also e equal to, uh, or at most, t of n over 4 plus t of n over 4 plus a constant times n over 2. And you see that we have two kinds of terms here, right? We have a cost that I'm going to say that we pay at the moment, right? So these are the terms of cn and cn over 2. And then we have, so those terms we can already add to the cost of our algorithm. And then we have the terms involving t that we have to keep expanding. Okay, so I'm going to keep, collect all the terms that we pay at the moment for a level. Uh, I'm going to collect them all at the side. Okay, so in this example here, you see that we have two times we have the term of c and over 2. So I'm just going to collect that at the side and sum it up so it's just a term of c times n. Okay, so that's what I've uh, done here. So you see that kind of for this first level of the tree, we get an extra term of cn, and for the second level of the tree, we get an extra term of, of cn. Okay, so it kind of looks nice and neat. All right, now let's keep expanding. So now t of n over 4, we can expand that. That takes time at most t of n over 8 plus t of n over 8 plus c times n over 4. Okay? And now I'm starting to run out of room, but you see that we can expand out each of the blue rectangles in the same way. Okay, and when I, when I do that, then I'm going to get four, I'm going to get this term of cn over four, four times. Okay, so the total for this level is again going to be c times n. Okay, so now our tree looks like this. And you can see that each level is contributing c times n for the total cost of the create complete combined term for that level. Okay, so we just keep proceeding in the same fashion. You know, now we can expand out each t of n over 8 term. And we keep doing that all the way until we reach the base case, where the argument to t is just 1. And if you think about it a little bit, you can see that in each level, the contribution on the side here, so this, the total contribution from the uh, create complete combine term for that level is going to be c times n. Okay? And, you know, once we reach the base case of our recursion, then we also know that t of 1 just takes time, is just order of 1, right? The time to solve an instance of size 1 is constant. Okay, so now let's add up the contributions from all these terms. So first note that the number of levels in the tree is log n, right? In each level of the tree, we're dividing n by 2, and the number of times that you have to divide n by 2 in order to reach 1 is log n. Okay, so we get this term of c times n, log n times. So the total contribution from the create complete combined step is going to be cn times log n. Okay, and now we have to count how many times this uh, term of t of 1 appears on the bottom level. Okay, we know that each time that term appears, it's going to cost us a constant. Okay, so how do we count that? Well, the number of level, the number of terms at each level is two times the number of terms at the previous level, right? So at the top we just have t of n, then we have two times t of n over two, then we have four times t of n over four, etc. So thus, at the level at the bottom, right, which is at depth log n, we're going to have two to the power log n terms or n terms. Okay, so at the bottom here, we're going to have n terms of t of 1. Each t of 1 is order 1. So the total contribution here for, this, for solving the base cases of our, our recursion is order n. And this actually turns out to be smaller than the total cost of the create complete combined step, which was order n log n. Okay, so now we've solved our recurrence relation. We execute the base case n times. That has a total cost of order n. And the total work done in the create complete combined step, so in this case, that's you know mostly just um, 
solving this third case where we compute the minimum in the first half and the maximum in the second half, the total time for that is order in log n. So the running time of our divide and conquer algorithm for the best time to buy and sell stock is order log in order in log n.